Greetings, it's Alex McClellan and I'm at the Shelburne Town Hall with Shelburne Mayor Wade Mills. Uh, we had an interesting council session this evening and I was wondering if you could give the public a little bit of an overview of the OPP presentation for the billing module. Sure. Uh, representatives from the OPP were here tonight to, uh, to discuss the billing model. So when, when the OPP uh, first gave their, their police uh, costing proposal in January, they, they discussed uh, essentially how, how the costing would work just for the first three years. So that's what they call a, a, a contract transitional period. After the three years are done, um, any municipality that, that moves to the OPP then roll from that transitional period into a standard billing model, which is the way that any other municipality that's policed by OPP is billed. Uh, so, so what they were doing tonight was explaining how that, how that framework works. And you know, from a very high level, what, what they explained was that the funding or the, the billing model rather is, is based on, on two factors. One is the number of households within the community community that they're policing and the second factor is uh, the, the number of calls for service based on a four-year average. Um, so, so within the first three years uh, through the, the transitional contract, essentially what happens is any, any community that moves from their own municipal force to an OPP uh, policing model is billed uh, essentially for the same service that they have. So the, the whole force is transitioned over to the OPP and, and they, they pay for the, the full complement of officers. After year three um, is when they move to the, to the, uh, the OPP billing model, which again is based on numbers of household uh, as well as actual uh, real, real life calls for service. Is it at all concerning that they base, the OPP base their statistics on MPAC for the number of houses in Shelburne, who base their statistics off of Stats Canada, who are notoriously known for being two years behind? And I was just wondering if that's worrying because already we'll have a greater population than they're budgeting for. Is that part of the reason they can't commit to a bottom line? Um, I, I think the reason they can't commit to a bottom line is because they don't have four years worth of calls for service to, to fill out that half of the formula. In terms of the, uh, the numbers of household, uh, I, I was actually glad to hear tonight that they use MPAC data instead of StatsCan data. And, and, and just to correct you slightly, MPAC doesn't rely entirely on, on StatsCan data. Uh, it is much more current than StatsCan. Um, StatsCan does a, does a census every four years, so often by the time you get, get survey data through StatsCan, it's, it's some of it's at least four years out of date. Uh, MPAC is, is much more current than that. Um, and unfortunately, I, I think it's, it's the only source that, that could realistically be used to determine n number of houses. Um, you know, that, that's, that's how we, you know, pr provide taxes. Um, that, that is the, the central taxing authority uh, in terms of assessment for the province of Ontario. So I, I'm not sure that you're going to find a, a more current source than that. Comparatively, um, per household, what do we pay now as compared to what the OPP suggested? So currently in Shelburne right now, we are paying slightly over $800 per household. Uh, the OPP indicated tonight that the average, um, the average cost across all municipalities in Ontario uh, was about $360, I think $359 per household. Um, I did ask about that because my, my suspicion is that while that's the average, there probably is a, a wide variance between those on the low end, those on the high end. My, my guess would be, and it, it's only a guess at, at this point, but my guess would be that Shelburne would probably fall somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, for, for a local example, you know, I, I, I think it probably would cost a township like Mulmer less to police than a, a municipality like Shelburne. So, you know, the, the 259 per household may be more applicable to a, a small rural community, but, but maybe not as, uh, as applicable to a town like Shelburne. Um, what, what they did indicate tonight is that there, there are uh, profiles of each community that the OPP police uh, available on their website. So, you know, that, that's a job both for council and, and our consultant to do. Uh, you know, try to identify some communities that are similar in size and similar in, in nature, you know, as far as, as community makeup is concerned, and, and look, at, look at those examples to see what they're paying on a per household basis. And I noticed tonight um, you were covering all your bases to get the most information as possible to Shelburneites and requested another look at the old information with the idea of expanding our current police station. Yeah, so I, I brought a notice of motion tonight. It'll, it'll be considered at the April 8th uh, meeting. Councillor Bonato seconded it for me. 
And, and basically what we're asking council to consider um, is to task staff with the job of going back and looking at uh, some of the previous work done by a, by a police accommodation subcommittee that was struck last term. Um, at, at the end of the day, what, what I would like to try to, to look at again with fresh eyes is whether or not there's an opportunity to address the adequacy concerns that the Shelburne Police Service have identified with respect to the current facility um, by way of, of looking at a, a renovation and expansion of the current police station. Uh, and, and let's see if, if there's any way to do that for less than $3 million. Um, that, that seems to be kind of the, the financial threshold under which we, we you know, responsibly could, could spend. Um, a new building is estimated to be anywhere from, from four to $7 million. And uh, you know, as, as we're finding out, um, you know, there are more and more financial uh, constraints on, on our municipality. And unfortunately, at the same time, we're, we're getting fewer and fewer uh, provincial dollars to help pay for those things. Um, so so let's, let's take a look. Uh, I want to make sure that, that, as I said, nothing's left on the field uh, before Council has to make its decision with respect to OPP. And if there's an opportunity to, uh, to, to address those adequacy uh, concerns uh, by, by looking at, a, at an expansion of the current building, and if we can do that within our financial means, then, then I think that's information the council has to have before we can make that final decision. And Shelburneites will have the opportunity very soon to ask questions at a public forum, is that correct? Absolutely, so next Wednesday, uh, April the 3rd at 6.30, uh, the OPP will be back uh, here at, at the Theatre at Town Hall at Grace Tipling Hall, um, and, and they'll, uh, they'll be here for at least an hour and a half to, uh, to answer any questions that the public may have. Uh, so if you have questions at home, make sure that you're here and uh, that, that'll be your opportunity to ask them. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the town um, is sending out a survey uh, this, this coming Wednesday uh, that'll be online uh, through the town website, which will allow residents to, uh, to answer a, a number of preset questions as well as offer any, any free-form comments that they may have with respect to the OPP uh, proposal. Before this election happened with this council that we have at present, it would have been a good idea to put it on the ticket for voters to find out what they thought or maybe they could, uh, maybe not a definite, do you want the police or OPP, but what do you think should happen question? In terms of a, a formal referendum? Possibly. Okay. Um, that, that is something that was raised late last term. Um, and, and unfortunately, the, the way that referendums work, uh, at least in the municipal context in Ontario, is they, they have to be on an election ballot. So, so any referendum has to be in conjunction with a municipal election, which obviously only happens every four years. In order to place a question on a ballot, uh, to, to have, it, have, have it posed as a referendum, uh, the, the question has to be approved by the minister. And there were very, very tight timelines. And, and unfortunately, just the way the timing worked, last council I don't think was really in a position to know which way we were going to meet the deadline to get a referendum question on the ballot. That said, uh, I do think every, every member of council who, who ran for office, uh, as well as those who, who ran unsuccessfully, addressed this question uh, throughout the campaign, um, through door-to-door through -door -door canvassing. I, I'm sure that, that they had a, a, a great opportunity to sort of get a sense of, of what the community is feeling in terms of policing. Um, you know, that, that was before we, we had all of the facts on the table. We're, we're still going through that fact-finding process now. Uh, but but I, I do think that, that all of the councillors around the table have a, a pretty clear sense of, of what the community's feeling is on this. Um, and, you know, uh, events like, uh, like next Wednesday night, uh, information that we're going to gather through the survey, all of that will help inform council as to where the public is on this issue. Uh, at, at the end of the day, you know, the seven of us are elected to, uh, to make tough decisions. Um, sometimes those are going to be wildly popular, sometimes they're not. Um, the only thing that I'm going to insist upon is that Council is armed with every last bit of uh, information that, that they may require before we're asked to make that decision. Well, thank you very much for your time, and I'm sure Shelburneites will be really eager to hear your information. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs>